Welcome everyone on a Sunday, Tuesday afternoon. This is our weekly business meeting. The time is approaching 2.01 p.m. Calling this meeting to order. Today is June 11, 2019. And I will ask Marcia to lead us in the pledge. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so moving on to item C, which is the consent calendar. Is there a motion? I move that we approve the consent calendar as listed on our business meeting agenda for June 11, 2019. I second the motion. Bill Brooks? Aye. Commissioner Duncan? Aye. Chairman Filios? Aye. Moving on to the payables list. I move that we approve the payables list for the week of June 3rd through the 7th in the amount of $416,732.28, along with jury panel payments of $1,330.36. I second the motion. Bill Brooks? Aye. Commissioner Duncan? Aye. Chairman Filios? Aye. And attending, by the way, are Commissioners Duncan, Brooks, and Filios. And do we have any changes to the agenda? I hear none, so moving on to our first action item. Award bid 2019-07, construction of household hazardous waste facility for solid waste. Kathy? Yes, Kathy Mayer, solid waste director for the record. This is the award of contract or recommendation to award to NNAC for the construction of a household hazardous waste facility at the Ramsey site. It's about a 6,000 square foot facility, pre-manufactured steel structure, electrical, mechanical, fire systems. Um, so the recommendation is to award in the amount of $1,055,730. Okay. Discussion, questions, motion. I move that we approve the award bid 2019-07 to NNAC in the amount not to exceed $1,055,730 for the construction of the household hazardous waste facility. I second the motion. Bill Brooks? Aye. Commissioner Duncan? Aye. Chairman Filios? Aye. Motion carried item two, award bid 2019-10 for Central Corridor Project. Once again, solid waste, Kathy. Uh, yes, this is the project for the installation of a lining system at the landfill. Um, it also includes a new entry road and some waste scales. Uh, four bids were received and evaluated, and the recommendation is to award to Earthworks Northwest Incorporated in the amount not to exceed $1 million. $596,480. Questions, concerns, motion? I move that we approve award bid 2019-10. This is for the Central Corridor Project uh, with Earthworks Northwest Inc. not to exceed $1,596,480. And I second the motion. Bill Brooks? Aye. Commissioner Duncan? Aye. Chairman Fillion? Aye, motion carried. Item three, award badge, weapon and ID card for the retirement of Deputy Konechny. Marsha Nicky, Marsh. Sheriff's Office. Come to you today um, presenting another retiree who by state statute meets the um, eligibility for his um, ID card and weapon. Okay, motion. I move that we approve uh, the award badge, weapon and ID card uh, in the event of retirement of deputy and it's connecting. Okay. 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 I second the motion. Bill Brooks. Aye. Commissioner Duncan. Aye. Chairman Filios. Aye. Motion carried. Item number four, maintenance agreement, H and H business systems with our Kootenai County Sheriff's Organization. Uh, Ricky Hinchy, Sergeant of the Jail uh, for the record. Um, we obtained a printer uh, from the construction company that completed our expansion. Um, they gave it to us since they were no longer needing it. It was under H&H &H originally there. Um, since we obtained it, we were just wanting to put it under our contract. Okay. So any increase in cost? Or um, from what I was told, there was not. Okay. Um, and I have to apologize. I did have 
some of those, but as far as mm -hmm. what I understood, there was no increase in the cost. Okay. Yeah, it looks like point zero zero seven five for black and white, point zero seven five for yeah. color copy. Yeah. Sounds Okay. Any other questions? Motion? I move that we approve the maintenance agreement with H and H Business Systems and KCSO. Is that the motion? Bill Brooks? Aye. Commissioner Duncan? Aye. Chairman Phileas? Aye. Motion carried. Item five. Permanent slope easement, solid waste. Yeah. Well, I guess this is me. Um, I, I can speak to it if you'd Did like. Did you speak to it? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I just thought of the earliest term. Uh, Jamila? <laughs> Commissioner Jamila Holmes, Civil Deputy Prosecutor, for the record. What you have before you is a permanent slope easement between the county and Lakes Highway District. You might recall H.J. Grapple, the developer of the Super One in Apple. They are presently engaged in a road widening project, and in order to widen Howard Road, the Lakes Highway District is requiring a slope easement of, of both sides, one side of which is a rural collection site. And um, Kathy Mayer concurs with, with the, uh, the proposed slope easement, and so I would ask that the, the board authorize the chairman's signature where appropriate. Okay. Anything else we need to know? Questions? Okay, motion. <laughs> I move that we approve uh, the permanent slope easement between Lakes Highway District and the county for the solid waste collection site out at Howard. I second the motion. Bill Brooks? Aye. Commissioner Duncan? Aye. Chairman Pilios? Aye. Motion carried. Item number six, agreement for the Harrison attenuator design, Parks and Waterways, Nick Snyder. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Nick Snyder for the record. Uh, yes, in fact, this is uh, an agreement with Smith Group Marine Engineers for a wave attenuation uh, uh, and design uh, study and uh, bid uh, documents for the Harrison Breakwater, the amount of $14,500. Okay. And this is budgeted, I assume? Yes, Commissioner. It's paid for uh, with restricted voting dollars and grants. Got it. Motion. I move that we approve the agreement, uh, I guess it's for the Harrison attenuator design. For the breakwater. Uh, for the breakwater. With Smith Group. With Smith Group. Thank you. That's what I was looking for. Yeah. I second the motion. Bill Brooks. Go on. Aye. Commissioner Duncan. Aye. Chairman Phileas. Aye. <clears throat> motion carried. Item number seven, a grant award, 18 WFM, Kootenai, Fernand Lake Natural Area Project, Research Management, Research, right, <laughs> Resource Management Office, and our Office of the Emergency Management. Kim? Yes, Kim Riley, for the record, this is the award for the Fernand Lake Na Natural Area Project. This is um, hazardous fuel treatment, and the award is $240,000 with a 26841 match, which will be in kind. Okay. Motion? I move that we approve grant award 18WFM, uh, the Kootenai Fernand Lake Area Natural Project um, and Office of Emergency okay. Management. And is it the oh, state fire assistance grant? That's what the application that came forward, it was called the state. That's what it was called. But okay. this is actually the award off of the document. I guess it's for now natural lake area project. Correct. Okay. Yep. Motion? No. That was yep, that was that was, was, the, that was the motion. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I second the motion. Bill Brooks? Aye. Commissioner Duncan? Aye. Jeremy Phileas? Aye. Motion carried item eight. Grant application, fiscal year nineteen, bulletproof S partnership for the Office of Justice Programs, Bureau of Justice Assistance, KCSO, and our research, excuse me, Resource Management Office. Come again. Yes, this is the item that um, we discussed just prior to the business meeting last week. Um, it's a reimbursement grant for the bulletproof vests that they replace. They do have a life, and so this would reimburse part of the cost. So it's basically a 50-50, whatever they fund. Um, the county would absorb the rest, and these are already in the FY20 budget. Okay. Motion? I move that we approve the grant application for the FY19 Bulletproof Vest Partnership uh, with the Office of Justice Programs. I 
Second the motion. Bill Brooks. Aye. Commissioner Duncan. Aye. Chairman Phileos. Aye. Motion carried. Item number nine. Change order 6 9, Riverstone Transit Center Research. Excuse me. Yeah, I keep saying that. Resource Management yes. Office. Go ahead, Karen. Yes, this is a summary of change orders 6 through 9. Um, number 6 and 9 we had brought before you prior and you approved them with a not to exceed. We've now negotiated all of these. Um, so, number 6 was site revisions. Um, with the monument sign lighting, the landscape lighting, and adding a flagpole and lighting. There were some reductions and increases there. Um, seven is approach revisions, exterior furring for, for um, number eight, and then street tree receptacles for number nine. We have negotiated all, and the total is $19,052. Okay. How does this fit within the budget? It's We have a contingency budgeted for change orders. Okay. Motion. All right, I move that we approve change orders six through nine for the Riverstone Transit Center and uh, in the amount of $19,052. I second the motion. Bill Brooks. Aye. Commissioner Duncan. Aye. Chairman Phillips. Aye. Motion carried. Yes. Item number 10. Change order number 11. Trail grading for the Riverstone Transit Center Resource Management Office. Kim? Yes, this is. Uh, a little bit more detailed. Sean's here to discuss that, but the total amount is twelve thousand four thirty-three and twenty-four cents. Sean Riley, for the record, um, the city of Coeur d'Alene, and specifically Chris Balsa, who is their engineer, had originally gotten a grant to extend the bike trail that runs down Celtis, the paved trail that runs down Celtis, to come across behind the transit center and then it would hook up with Riverstone and then they would extend it up past the hotel so eventually it would make its way to um, Ramsey, Northwest Boulevard. When they got their grants, and it's a, they, the, the bids were too high, ultimately they didn't use the money in time so they lost their grant funding. This is the city? Now. This is the city. Okay. So the city about a month ago or so approached us and asked if we would be willing to pay for and have it just rough graded. And then they would come back at a later time and pay it. So this change order is to have Tila Riviere, who is our contractor for the transit project, do all of that dirt work. Um, it's my understanding there's plenty of money in the budget. I don't foresee um, any large change orders on the project. I mean, we've already done all the dirt work and the buildings erected and the glass is in, the roof is on it. I mean, so I, I think the money's there. It's just a decision whether you want to use that to help the city of Coeur d'Alene rough in, not, we're not paving it, we're just roughing in this bike trail. Yeah, is the bike trail usable until they pave it? No, it's probably not going to be okay. usable. Okay. It's, it, it has a, a fairly good hill to it, so I, I doubt it. And there's a movement of a dry well, and a, there's a couple other little things in there, but pretty much it's it's just the dirt grading to okay. get that hillside flat so that they can come in when they get the money to pay. And if they never get the money, then we've done this for no reason? Is that Go ahead, Kim. This is something that um, we would want to have as far as the whole, you know, intermodal, where now the, the trail will come all the way to the transit center. So it's something that we would like to have as well. So basically, it's kind of a we're helping them now, they'll help us later. And they're also willing to pay the cash match. I've asked that they pay the cash match on this so we would not dip into our other jurisdiction funding. Okay. And how soon will we know whether they they're doing this or not? Is this a yet this year or next year? This is all part of the KMPO that you know their long term planning. So this is all stuff that's on the agenda of things that they want to do. So I'm not sure. Did you have more of when? I just wonder if we do this work and then over the next year or two or three, weather and traffic, whatever degrades this thing or. Is it then we have to do it again or do something again to make that paveable? Isn't it better to do it now than after they pave and everything in there? 
yeah, well, we have to get it done now because otherwise it's going to limit the access to it because we're getting ready. They're doing it today. They're laying base. We're set to pave July 8th. My understanding in talking with Chris on, on site was that within a year, year and a half, they'll pave it. Okay. It's, it's not that they don't have the money. I don't think it's not that they don't have the money to pay, but I think it's just that they don't have the, the equipment and the personnel to do the grading themselves, so they have to pay for it. Well, and if we were to do this later, we would incur costs to bring somebody back in, Correct. I assume, right? They're out there working. Right. There's no mob fee in this at all. I mean, there's a little bit of equipment movement. The other problem is the, the trail itself butts right up to the landscaping of the transit center. In fact, the, the curb wall was designed and the landscaping was designed with that trail in mind, even though it's not there. So in order to do that job, if they came back, they would have, then we would incur a cost of having some of our landscaping replaced and irrigation and that kind of thing. So when they drew this up, if you look at it, on the plans, you can see the curvature of the trail in the shadow there. And so that's why this whole thing was set right from the beginning to do this. And it has been in the works for a while, but the city just, they, they got a grant award, but it wasn't enough to cover, like I said, the, the funding of the project, so they just lost their money. And they're committed to doing it? Oh, they want it, they want it done. Okay. No doubt. Yeah, I don't see that there's a problem for us in having and dealing with it now especially while the resources are out there and it's in the plan. Do we have a motion? Sure, I move that we approve change order number 11, trail grading for the Riverstone Transit Center. Second the motion. Bill Brooks? Aye. Commissioner Duncan? Aye. Chairman Phileos? Aye. Motion carried. Item number 11. It's a grant project funding agreement with Idaho Transportation Department from Multimodal Transit Center Resource Management Office, Kim. Yes, this is um, excess FY18 funding, state fiscal year 18 funding that ITD had available. They put it out that if this was available for specific type of, types of projects and our transit center qualifies for that. So this would give us um, the funding to start phase two, which is, phase, which is paving the remainder of the lot that we have out there. Um, this would give us enough to start with design and engineering and possibly get going on construction on that. We do have, um, there's another, when this became available, we started looking for other opportunities and there's a competitive grant available for the same type purpose. So joining the two together, we would be able to complete the entire project. So it's $200,000 with $50,000 in kind for cash as needed. Okay, and is that the paving of the two lots? That's, well, the, the first lot is taken care of with our existing oh, oh, this is the second So one? this would be the second part that would still remain gra gravel at this point. Okay. Any questions for Ken? Uh, if that grant doesn't come through, it would just remain graded and not paved? Or? Well, these dollars are already there. It's just if, if you allow us to take advantage of them. So if not, then it's just gravel. And right now, cars just park in that area. But I mean, you're saying that there's a second grant needed to finish. To finish the paving. Correct. Right. Okay, I'm just saying if that one doesn't come available, then what, what's the outcome? Then we would have to apply again. Okay. To who you're I, I would think that, I mean, they know, they want us to finish the project. And so I would think that if we have this, it's going to increase the likelihood of receiving the competitive grant. Okay. Any other questions? Mo motion? I move that we approve the grant project funding agreement uh, with Idaho Transportation Department. Second the motion. Bill Brooks? Aye. Commissioner Duncan? Aye. Chairman Phileas? Aye. Motion carried. Item 12, request to shift salary salvage dollars to B budget from our prosecutor. Barry? Commissioner, do you have a copy of my uh, memo? Uh, it's in the... Uh, you send us an email. I you want a hard copy? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. I mean, I'm fine. Thank you. I got it. All right. So, 
This last uh, budget year, we had some unanticipated cost increases. Westlaw, a little over $5,000, and then we had to buy some Adobe Pro um, licenses for about $1,200. The Adobe Pro, well, the Westlaw, I think, is just renegotiation of the existing contract during the course of the uh, budget year that we didn't really anticipate. And then the Adobe Pro was to provide more specialized scanning and searching capacity um, in those licenses cost around $1,200. So um, we're running pretty thin on our on my B budget this year, and so I'm asking for the board to approve the transfer of some sal salary dollars over to provide uh, for some training opportunities for my attorneys this summer, which I was gonna I would have to use that training money to pay for the stuff that we didn't anticipate if the board um, wasn't going to approve this particular request, uh, as well as we're trying to get all of our legal secretaries with, you know, decent-sized dual monitors. Um, they're sitting in front of them all day long and they have the same, same monitors um, and two at a time so they can go back and forth, especially with our, uh, you know, online software for case management. So it's kind of a... Well, it's a big deal for them, so it's a big deal for me. So that's the reason for the request, and I'm asking the board to approve it. So if they don't get this training this year, then what happens? Well, I'm trying to remember. I think there's only one attorney in the, in the group that I would probably send down who are up against a, uh, deadline. a deadline for their CLE credits, um, but I do like to send attorneys down. We pay annual dues every year to be a member and for me to get their training and keep them up to speed uh, is important. So if I didn't get the money, I wouldn't send them. I'd have to, you know, try and send them again next year, but I'd like to keep the attorneys up to speed on what's happening. Sure. I guess my only concern is when we approve the other positions, we approved it out of contingency and so the other three positions earlier this year. And then having salary salvage, I'm just not. That's why I asked you about overtime earlier. Overtime. If, right. So you, that's not an issue for you. Um, oh, right. Right. So I'm just. I just wanted. Are the monitors in your 2020 budget? Are they put in there? No. Okay. Because um, I guess I'd be more inclined to to send the one attorney who's up against the deadline than just to blanket the whole thing I guess I just don't want to come short you know already we dipped into contingency and and that's I guess that's just my concern so come up short in what regard I mean the money's in the budget it's a budget right so is this so this is like this is continuing ed essentially for the yeah. attorneys yeah every six months IPAA has a conference I usually send you know, three to five attorneys, at least from the criminal division, to attend. So, at that rate, if you look at, you know, I get everybody scheduled and trained usually over the course of three years, roughly. If you think there's twice every year, uh, or they have this training. So, I try to rotate it to make sure that everybody has their hours in. The primary reason I like to, to send them to this training is, first of all, it's really inexpensive as compared to sending them to national conferences, that kind of thing. Um, but it also allows them to get their hours so they're not scrambling at the end of their three years and picking up, frankly, credits that are not applicable to what we do, and especially in the criminal division, uh, but also tend to be you know, more costly. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and this is in a situation where one attorney can go return and train the rest, right? Each one has to accumulate the CE on their own? Oh, yeah, that's correct. I mean, you can't, right. Okay. Yeah, they have to have the hours that is for the professionals. Yeah. Okay. I'm fine with it. Do we have a motion? No. Yeah. I move that we uh, approve the request uh, by the prosecuting attorney to shift salary salvage dollars to the B budget. <clears throat> okay. Is that good enough? And then you also have the five thousand dollars. 
I think you should probably say the amount, Commissioner. Yeah, say the amount. Okay. Which one? Where is the amount? It's at the bottom, $7,400. Oh, in the amount of $7,400? Is that sufficient? Is that correct, Rick? It is. Good. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. Bill Brooks? Aye. Commissioner Duncan? Nay. Chairman Filios? Aye. Motion carried. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Moving on to item 13. And this is the agreement with the City of Coeur d'Alene for the 4th of July Park in Kootenai County. Uh, we took this up at a prior meeting. I think it was last week's business meeting, if I'm not mistaken, or the one before, with the BOCC and uh, the CEO, uh, Steve Wilson, of the Chamber. And so I guess we're ready to execute the agreement. Is that correct? Do we have anything to sign? Or? Nope. I guess so. I guess we're just gonna we're just gonna ratify it. So then, do we have a motion to yeah. approve the agreement? Yeah, sign. There's an agreement to sign. Do you, do you have a copy of the agreement, Commissioner? I have it in my packet. Yeah, it's it's here. It's okay. it's in our packet. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I guess I would just still express my concerns as I did before. Is it's the taxpayers paid for the parking lot and to have to pay to park there on this one day. I understand the reason is to to gather funds, but I'd rather see the donation. You know, hey, we're out here with our donation buckets. You know, we'd love a $10, $20 donation towards the $60,000 in fireworks every year. So I'm, I'm not in favor of the agreement. Okay, so the parking at this facility is free. Correct. The, yeah, it's still the, public. They're simply charging for the rest. Bill, do you have any thoughts? No. No thoughts, okay. Um, Typically every year where donations are requested, we fall far short. And not only that, and I don't have a problem in making it available to the taxpayer, but a lot of the folks who attend this are not our local taxpayers. So I have no problem with the agreement. Do you have any thoughts, Bill? Well, we did this last year, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Yes, we did. Okay. There weren't any, weren't any problems. And uh, I think the argument that uh, Commissioner Duncan makes is understandable, but uh, I would, uh, I would, I think we should move to approve the agreement. Okay. Do you want to make a motion there for? Sure. I move that we uh, approve the agreement for Fourth of July parking uh, with the uh, <coughs> city, uh, city of Coeur d'Alene cha Chamber. Uh, that's that's it. it. Okay. I'll second the motion. Bill Brooks? Aye. Commissioner Duncan? Nay. Chairman Billias? Aye. Okay, item number 14, budget adjustment for the HVAC replacement for the courthouse buildings and grounds. Yeah, we need right. to move uh, some money out of 8517 to 9011 to pay for the $9,800 to pay for that. Okay. So this is money available? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I, I guess it just has to, and Dina can probably speak to the fact that because of the amount of it, it now becomes a fixed asset, so it can't yeah. come out of the original. Norm yeah, normally these repairs are, are come out of the 8517 account, and that's where they're budgeted, but this one is over $5,000, so we have to look it down in the capital section. So this is just to pick up those dollars and move it to the proper location for reporting purposes. Got it. Any other questions? No. Mo motion? I Aye. I'm sorry. Did you have a question? Oh. No, Sean, Sean? has something. Oh, Sean, Sean I, to add. I, I was just curious. Um, it's my understanding, and I, I bring this up because the five year plan, mm -hmm. now that we've kind of established funding for the tank, is not going to come out of there. It's more than what we thought it was. That um, I understand that there's um, the $5,000 over capital has to have an asset tag, but and, and we used to do this with memos, and we don't do it that way anymore. But when the maintenance budget is approved at, at the, during the budget deliberations in August, you say, okay, here's $85,000. That's your line item for 85.17 is maintenance. As it used to be that it didn't matter the $5,000. I know there was a policy on that, but it used to be that we, as maintenance people, 
would just go get that because it was budgeted and then just make sure that the forms were correctly filled out as far as the auditor's office was concerned for the asset and you know the tags and all that stuff so every is every expense over five thousand dollars now need because there's no statute for this it might be county policy but it, they check with legal is the is this board going to say that any expense over $5,000 needs to come to the business meeting and be approved at the business meeting. So, Because it hasn't way. been that way. Jamila, did you want to oh, jump in yeah, here? Yeah, that's not on the agenda. I don't okay. know if that's necessarily an appropriate discussion to have right now. Well, you know what, then, Sean? Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. That, that, okay. that is part of a bigger discussion, maybe for debris. Okay. Yeah, I was just okay. going to say, let's add it to the Yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay. okay. So noted. Yep, okay, we'll do that. All right, so then let's move on to item 15, which is resolution 2019. Well, do we, can we go ahead and vote on that? I mean, it, it doesn't harm anything to make the movement and, and do all that. He, I think Sean's point is going further. Is this oh, a I'm new, sorry, that's a right. new we didn't way vote. we're doing? Yep, you're right. Okay. okay. So let's have a motion on item 14, please. Sure. Um, I move that we approve the budget adjustment, uh, taking funds from... 8517 to 9011 in the amount of $9,800 for the HVAC system replacement. Second the motion. Bill Brooks? Aye. Commissioner Duncan? Aye. Chairman Filios? Aye. So then moving on to item 15, resolution 2019 55, exchange or trade of personnel property, KCSO. Uh, Commissioner Sergeant Will Clink, who's uh, Sheriff's Office, and yeah, we're asking to uh, trade in a five. Uh, dry suits to uh, Jake Rolson at uh, Jake's Diving. Um, these five suits are between 25 and 20 years old. They've also been in storage for over 10 years and not being used. And so we're asking to uh, trade those two suits in for a brand new suit valued at $2,899 um, uh, through Jake's business. Okay. So when you trade them in, is there, is there a trade in value? Yes, sir, there is. Um, in researching on the internet, those suits are, you know, on eBay they were selling around $200 a piece, give or take, is what they were selling. Okay. So I'm assuming what Jake will, will do is he would uh, uh, service them, get them back up and running, and he'd use them for his students, most likely what he would do. And so there's some value there for him, and that's why he's willing to give us a brand new suit at a substantial cost difference uh, for the trade. -off. These that you're training in are not dry suits, are they? They're, they're not dry suits, they're wet suits? They are dry suits. Sir. Well, they are dry suits. Yes, sir. So we were talking about valves and things. Valves and seals and okay. zippers and Good. yes, okay. sir. Okay. And this is budgeted. Uh, this is not budgeted. This is just would be a straight trade. He takes the five suits and trade. He we receive the brand new suit. Oh, okay. As a trade. I, I was thinking the quantity too. Okay. Understood. Motion. I move that we approve resolution 2019-55, which is the exchange or trade of personal property. Uh, the dive suits with uh, Jake Scuba Adventures. I second the motion. Bill Brooks? Aye. Motion Duncan? Aye. Chairman Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Final item, public comment. I have some public comment. Mm -hmm. Go right ahead. <clears throat> I am very concerned that we, I, I've gotten received, I guess that's the proper way to put it, at least a dozen calls or emails this week about taxes. Uh, people feel they're being taxed out of their homes. Uh, a lot of the same kind of sentiment that was very prevalent uh, just before Proposition 13 in California. California. And I think we need to really hold firm about taxes and specifically about foregone taxes. This board, each and in, every individual commissioner said they were not in favor of foregone and we didn't want foregone brought forward to us in any scenarios. In other words, don't waste your time. It's very important to understand, people of Kootenai County are done with taxes. We take the 3%, we stand up and take it as we should, but to go back and tell somebody they gotta pay a percent and a half more from last year's taxes or whatever, no. That's just one commissioner's feeling, very important. That's all. Okay. 
that it? Yeah. And you're right, all three of us have forsook. 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 Forsake. Forgone times. I, 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 I think for I think Leslie's got for, it right. for fiscal for, 20. I like okay. forsook. That's how much. Any other public comment? Hearing none, 2.35 p.m. meeting adjourned. Thank you.